for a while, uh, mainly because um, there's a bit of a thing in control and restraint DVDs where you see a lot of people, uh, well there's two things, one is just how crazy control and restraint as it's normally taught is. Control and restraint on a DVD will normally mean you'll see a DVD where people are going like this and going, hey Gap, now come with me sir, and all this kind of caper. And the second thing is, there's missing, um, that's one thing that's missing in the RBSD world, the decent control and restraint DVD. And secondly, a lot of door lads are missing this, a lot of lads who go on the door, they've lifted the weights, they've done boxing, but they've never actually, even lads who've grappled, door work and moving people around when you're on the door is a very, I think, it's quite a unique skill set. Um, I mean, one of the things that I've always remembered was the lad uh, that, I, that I used to train with, who was actually on the DVD recently, he was a very, very good competitive tie boxer and also an extremely strong bodybuilder. And uh, the, one of the, I think the second or third night I was working with him, it came time to throw two lads out and I said, I'm going to get this lad on the left, we'll take him through that fire exit over there, you get, you get the other guy. And he walked up to the other guy to move him and it was like, you know when Michael Jackson does that dance where he's looking for his keys and his hands move everywhere, he was doing that. Because he didn't know, and the guy's just looking at him like that, going, what the fuck? He thought he was going to get ragged out, and we mate walked up to him and started going, because um, um, he just didn't know, didn't have the software. If he'd clinched him, or if the guy had punched him, he'd been inside and hammering him, and he would have known exactly what to do. But moving people who are not fighting you, but just resisting you, is actually quite difficult. And uh, when I'm looking on the forums, and I'm looking at people's DVDs, and they're talking about this, I can kind of tell those who've done it and those who haven't. You know, you'll hear some people say, oh, if, if they mess around, just knock them out. That's not an experienced doorman to me. Any experienced doorman knows one of the worst things you can do. If I want to move Reg, the 16 and a half stone out of my club, do I want to move him fighting me or do I want to move him asleep? If he's asleep and he's a dead weight, I'm not moving him anywhere, not without like three of us. And if I try to move him on my own, the second thing if people go unconscious is, he could hurt himself badly, then the club will get sued and then I'll get nicked. You know, if somebody's lolling, or if somebody's really, really pissed, or they've been, um, their, their drink's been spiked, and you move them, and these limbs that are all relaxed are whacking into door frames and that, you can drag them out of the club and they'll have massive bruises and marks on them. Just the last thing you want, as I say, it's a very, very difficult skill. The only thing that I could compare it to, the first few times that I did door work that I moved somebody out of the club, when I was in exactly the same situation as my mate, as a, as a young and experienced doorman was, what the fuck do I do? How do I actually... You know, where do I put my hands on him to get him to move? And if I'm moving a guy and he's just struggling a bit, what do I do? And at what point do I actually start to fight him? And if you don't know, how are you going to, you know, if you've not practiced beforehand, how are you going to know? You're just going to have, I mean, I did it trial and error, I just worked it out. But I was going to say, the only thing that it compared to for me was, um, was Tai Chi. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be shocked to hear that. It was nothing like tight. It was nothing like tight clinch work. It was nothing like anything I'd done in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or MMA. Nothing like in boxing. I'd done a little bit of Tai Chi with a guy every once in a while. We'd meet up and we'd just do some Chi Sao push hands. And if you've seen like Chi Sao and, and, and Southern Kung Fu styles and in Wing Chun, it tends to be quite fast and it's quite high and it's very very rapid. In Tai Chi, it's a lot of pulling and pushing and it's it's a lot more based. That's the only thing I could compare it to. There is. Very, very few martial arts styles, if I could borrow your body for a second, where, say for just an example, I'm just going to hold Reg on the wrist and push his back and encourage him to move in that direction. There's very few martial arts styles that will show you how to do that. Tai Chi does. You know, I'm not recommending you go out and study Tai Chi because it's very, very hard to find decent combative Tai Chi instructors. So, basically, this is just a DVD to give you an introduction. If you're a young doorman or a new doorman and you're about to go on the door, you should never go on the door without having done some of what I'm going to show you on this DVD. I'm going to show you one or, few, one or two techniques. The techniques aren't important. What's important is the drill. If you've never had the experience of moving another human being from A to B, who's resisting slightly, not fighting you, just resisting slightly, it's very, very difficult. If I start, if, if me and Reg have an altercation and I throw a right hook and we actually start to fight, Reg is going to know exactly what to do. Let's beat the shit out of me. That's not how door work works. That's not what door work is about. Some lads who start on the door think that's it. They think if you say, come on mate, you've got to go, if you just push my hand off and they start being belligerent like that, that's the time to knock them out. It's not. It, or it, it could be, but you've got to be careful. If you've got a short fuse, you're going to end up in all kinds of trouble legally and within the community in which you're working. You've got to give people a little bit more leeway than that. Other thing is that really pisses me off is the so-called 
old school bouncers who'll say things like, fucking hell, if he fucking resisted me, I'd just bite his face off. Don't be stupid. You, you just can't, you can't go around if, as soon as somebody resists you, knock them and start chewing on their face. Well, you can do, but see what happens to you. You know, or come and work in Liverpool, bite somebody's face off and see what happens to you. You know, Dorman are not top of the food chain anymore. You know, Dorman are right the way down the bottom in a criminal sense and also in a, in a social sense. Nobody likes us. Society's not on your side. Police are not on your side. You've only got each other. So that's the other thing. Ideally, I know very, very few teams do this. This is quite an old school thing to do, but we used to do it. Um, it's train together. You should actually be training with the other lads on the door. It sounds cheesy, it sounds old fashioned, but it will make the, such a big difference. What group in the military or in sport or in industry who had to do a high pressure job together wouldn't drill it first? Even if all you do is go down on the gym, do a bit of boxing, do a bit of weights, and then just do this drill that I'm going to show you now. It's one drill, let's give it a name, we'll call it the A to B drill, and you can do it in different ways. I'm going to show you level one, we'll call this level one. This is point A. Can you track me? Where this kettlebell and this headboard is, is point B. And this is your level one, which is total compliance. It's all focused on what the guy you're moving is doing. And he's going to give me total compliance. If Reg is in a bar, he's drinking, he's talking to his friends, and the manager's told him, or told me, that I have to get him out, how should I approach him? Because some of you guys who've never done this before don't even know. You don't know whether to come straight on, you don't know whether to come to the side, or how to do it. My preferred thing, and most of the lads I've seen work with, would just be to come up to the side, start with the highest level of respect and, prof and professionalism and politeness that you can. Even an opener to, ch to start chatting with, like, hi hey, mate, how's it going? Just to test him. If I come up to the side while Reg is talking to his mates, maybe he's just grabbed a waitress or he's thrown a drink on the floor or he's even punched somebody and he's back at the bar and he's back talking to his mates. I don't really want him to see me coming. I would rather be in here and close. Hi mate, how's it going? You having a good night? Something like that just to get started. The first thing I've done is I've come up to his side, so my chest is pretty much touching his shoulder, and I've just touched him just on the back of this arm. I'm just here. I've not actually started to get hold of him up here. It's not a grappling match at this point. Hi mate, how's it going? Nobody can see that I'm touching him here, but I now have a kinesthetic anchor. It's a posh word, it sounds really, really technical. I can feel him, that's what I'm saying. If I'm here and I'm here, I can now feel him. If he tenses, or if he starts to punch me with that hand, I feel it here first, before that even moves. And as soon as that starts to go, yes, then we can start looking at different techniques. Where's the bar? In our imagination, the bar is here, the door is over there. If he tenses, as though he's gonna to start to be silly, be careful, you might have a glass in his hand and he might just be about to politely put it down for you and walk out. So at this point, all I need to do is be ready. If he starts to tense and move, what's my first motion? I've already got physical control, I can just say, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the approach. You should be friendly, you should be professional, but you've got to be assertive. Assertiveness is psychological, it's emotional. Hi hey, mate, how's it going? Is there a problem? Have you got a problem? Not being offensive, just keep smiling. I heard you, I heard you felt out with somebody over there, was there a problem? This is quite assertive body language, my hands are across him, but I'm not going like this. I'm giving him a chance to speak to me, and then I'm going to say to him, look, you're going to have to go. And here I am, my hand's in front of him, his hand's over there, this hand ain't doing anything, he can't headbutt me, and he might very well go. Rather than create a situation where there are lads, and I was one of them for a time, who every time you ask them to take somebody out, so I was a headbutt for a couple of years, um, and every time I'd say to the lads, especially in Tenerife, yeah, the young lads who are on the steroids, they're on the gear, they the first time on the door, they want to prove to you how tough they are. And I'd be like, I don't need to prove to me how tough you are, I want you to prove to me how professional you are. Get people out without getting them hurt, without getting yourself hurt. And what they'll do is they'll create fights by their attitude. Listen mate, you know you touched that waitress, you know you fucking threw your drink on, you're going to have to go. You just, it, and it's assertive, I'm not asking, do you mind leaving? Do you, do you mind going? Would you like to stay? There's none of that. You're going to have to go. That's the way it is. Slightly apologetic tone, still assertive. So if you just put your drink out for me, you're going to have to make your way outside now. He's got a choice in his head now, at this point, where he could actually just choose to walk. And if he does, if you just come here for me, Reg, here's the point A to point B drill. I'm not going to start. If, I, if, he's, if he's choosing to walk, you're going to go and he says, yeah, fair enough, mate. I was out of order. I just want to have a good night. I'll go. All right, mate, sound. 
As we're walking, I'm going to stay close to him, and that's all. I'm just touching here. I'm not showing everybody that I'm throwing him out, and I'm not making him feel like an idiot. I'm just touching him here. If you don't think that's necessary, then don't touch him, but stay close to him. He is going, and keep behind him. Right, my objective here, this is not self-defense. I'm not protecting myself in a fight. I am seeking to move another human body out of physical space. You just come back here again for me, Reg. So as we're walking here, you are going to have to go, mate, you know, because you just, it's just make sure he can see where the exit is. I don't stand in front of him and go, the exit is over there. Come, leave. And walk backwards. You're laughing. I've seen lads do this on the door. Come on, mate, you're going to have to go. Is he my fucking girlfriend? Come on, we're going. It's not like that. You stand behind him. Why am I standing behind him? Because he is going to go. If he starts to fuck around. So if we're walking and you just stop, Red, so if you just stop, just stop yourself, right? Mate, you are going to have to go. And behind him, it's very simple. You can't have to push him out the door. My objective is not at this point to beat him up. I need him out. So I'm just going to stand behind him. I'm just going to walk him. It's okay if you knock it. I'm just going to walk him. If he stops, then I can start to be more physically assertive. This will make you are going to have to go. If he starts giving it, I need to get my coat, I need to get my mobile phone, I need to tell my girlfriend. That's a judgment call. There are some lads out there will say, fuck him, if he's left his coat aside, fuck him off, he'll just have to go. Compromise, okay? If he's being reasonable and he has genuinely left his phone or he's left his coat or he needs to tell his mates, then you, you, sometimes you are going to have to find a compromise. Generally speaking, I make a rule in my head when I'm working, if I told him he's got to go, he'll have to go. Usually they've got a mate who won't be as aggressive. Listen mate, if you want to get his phone, you can, he's going to have to go outside and I'm being reasonable. He's going to have to go, bang on bang, and out we go, we just walk. I'm not doing anything more than that. The only reason I'm putting my left hand to his shoulder is because he stopped. If he hadn't stopped, we would have just walked. So drill that, drill actually saying, come on mate, you're going to have to go, and then walk. Yeah, all right, you, you just do that to me, you just show me what, what I just showed you. So basically, Reg has just grabbed me here, Reg might be here dormant one then. Hopefully I'll talk him out of it. And I'm saying, all right, all right, mate, I'll go, it's not a problem, it's not a problem. But here at this point, if I'm bladdered or off my head, I might actually start walking into people. That's the second reason Reg needs to be behind me. The third reason is I could fall if, whilst he is walking me out of the club, I smash my head on the wall, who do you think is going to get it? He is. Oh yeah, you smashed a lad's head walking out of the club, and Reg's going to be giving it, oh, I only walked him out. Nobody's going to buy that, so he's got to be careful. Just go back there again, mate. Here's the drill. Okay, level one. We we'll call it level one. I'm going to go and I'm going to be good. Walk me out. Please, Reg. Keep walking me. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. He feels like he's in control. He's very likely, without making a show of it, applying pressure into my arm, squeezing my elbow against my body. It's a little bit more of a martial artsy sort of a trick. It just gives me less leverage and actually he can swing in for a body lock if he chooses to by, by controlling that elbow there. It's not necessary, but every little helps. We go back again. So I take it up the level. We'll call this level two. Just keep walking me, walking me out, but I'm going to be a little bit more belligerent and a bit more pissed. Oh, I'm, not, mate, I, I'm not going, I'll be better over there. I'll just talk any kind of crap to you. But I'm not trying to hurt him. What Reg is doing here is absolutely right. He's keeping his head in low. He's realising now I'm being difficult, but he doesn't look bad because he's just what he's actually doing is he's holding me here. You can't see on that side. Just grab me the way you grab me there and there. Because he's feeling me starting to fall this way and this way. So he's just guiding me out still. I'm not really messing around. I'm still going. You need to practice that. You think that looks ridiculous? You've got to do it. You've got to get hold of your mate and have your mate do that. Let's take it up a notch. Okay? I'm not fighting, but I don't want to leave. I'm not fighting against them. I'm not being, I'm not being particularly naughty but I'm just doing this kind of, get off me, right? So you've still got to take me from point A to point B, okay? Mm. Without, like, damaging me or getting angry and smashing my head into the wall, he's a bit of a beast. So they're saying, no, but I'm not going, I'm not going. Now, this is undignified for him and for me and for the club, it doesn't look good. You've got to get him out. If somebody's got to this point and they're pushing people in, yeah, you've just got to get them out. So from here, if I keep messing around, if you keep pushing me, Reg, just keep pushing me towards the door, you've basically still got control. This is the kind of technique that you need to work. What Reg is doing, hey? That looks cool. That did look cool. <laughs> what Reg is doing is kind of like, chi sao means sticky hands. This is almost like a door work, chi sao. 
Usually when we do stuff, you just turn face, but if you do sticky hands, you can kind of do it from out here and you're pushing and, and like rolling hands and just move. This is, with, this is with the whole of your body. The Tai Chi Chi Sao, they start looking at locking, folding, pushing. But this is a one-way Chi Sao, where Reds is basically rolling my body or I'm moving him. So I'm saying, come on mate, out you go. Now get your hand there, come on mate. There's a good lad, hold your hand in here. This is up here, there's a good lad, out we go. And I'm moving him. Staying in control psychologically and physically. So I'll move you out, you just struggle a little bit more. So you've got behind him, nice and polite. Come on mate, well don't do that, come on. Keep moving, this is the kind of thing you've got to do. This is, Reg's preference is different. Reg has got more experience doing MMA and grappling. So he was actually coming inside and holding here and here, which is fine for me. This, this for me is more of a Tai Chi style thing where usually, I know I keep saying Tai Chi and you're laughing, but it works man. I'm usually choosing to take a limb and push the body away from the limb because it's very uncomfortable and it just makes them want to move. There are, there's a, a particular, like one particularly good thing is just pure classical Tai Chi is um, where you actually, if somebody's struggling to go and the door's behind you, you swoop the arm, grab it, pull it, yank them, and out they go, sorry. You just, and you use that momentum. Here, pull, and round. So you're gonna say, what martial arts did you do to use door work? Oh, it's Tai Chi. You know, I think you're fighting like this really, really slow. So it's, it's this rolling body thing. It's a really, really weird experience. You just need to drill it over and over again. If you just, uh, don't fight against me, but, refuse to move forward. So this is a typical one. This is worse than fighting me because it can make me look like I've lost control. When you're on the door and you're in a team, you should never have that. We're doing these drills solo. When you choose to move somebody out, don't be a cowboy. Don't do it by yourself. Get back up. Preferably. Sometimes there's just not enough lads and you just can't afford to. So this is the kind of thing you're going to have to do. I've already decided he's going to be trouble, so I'm being a little bit more assertive. Come on, sir, out you go. Here I am, straight to the top of the back of his head, the back of his neck, pulling this in the other direction. It just makes things uncomfortable for him. My feet need to be set. I need to sink my weight. Come on, you're going to have to go, stop. No, come on, come on, keep moving. So I'm using my elbow. This, don't worry about the techniques. You'll figure it out for yourself. Everybody does it a little bit differently. But fundamentally, I've got to get behind him and push him out like you're moving a car. Now, if you've never done that before, You'll have the Michael Jackson looking for his keys experience. Come on, sir. How you go? How you go? <laughs> it's not good. It doesn't look professional. It's got to be assertive. It's got to start polite. You don't, you know, this isn't the 80s. You can't run in and go, we're throwing him out. Bam! Smash! Out we go. Throw a terror over his head and just smash fuck out of him. You start professional. Come on, sir. You're going to have to go now. Out you go that way. Standing behind him or next to him. I'm talking into his ear. Walk that way. The exit's just over there, so just keep moving that way. I'm making a show as well for the bar, for the public who are watching. It makes life easier. Could you just do that way? Just point straight in front of my face. So you say, you make it really clear where you want to go. Don't struggle with somebody. The, the police are trained to do this. When you're struggling with somebody, they should always know what you want them to do. If Reg puts a pain compliance technique on me, which I fucking hate and I'm not going to really show you, if he doesn't tell me what he wants me to do, but he just starts squeezing my wrist, I'm going to be like, give me an ashtray, fuck off. If he says move and I'll stop, I'll be like, right, where do you want me to go? Constant, you know, clear messages, move forward, the exit is over there. And I'm not doing, like I said before, you must go, the exit's over there. I'm getting here, the exit's over there, mate. Should we go? Yeah, we're going. And we're walking. It's a really weird little little skill set and as I say, if you get this wrong, it can look very undignified. And the more it's not about techniques, just drill this over and over again. Little techniques will come out from it and you'll realise, you know, oh there's a little, you know, uh, two on one. There's a little like wrestling moves you can use. We've just done a DVD with Dave Faulkner where he showed a two on one. You know, you start popping this down and you go, oh, that's quite nice that. The fundamental principle is you're moving the person out. So if we go again Reg is moving me, and I decide, you know what, I don't want to go. This is another thing you're going to get. Say if you're going to move me out, Reg, and you're going to move me from point A to point B, and every time you touch me and do this, what are you going to do? This is a pain in the arse. I'm not fighting him, but I'm not moving. And every time he touches me, I'm going like that. Get off me, I'm not going. 
got to move me. I'm not going, I'm not going, no, get off, get off, I'm not going. If he keeps doing this, he's losing control of the situation, isn't he? Somebody who does this, I know this sounds harsh, you've got to make a decision, you've got to move them. If somebody's doing that, genuinely speaking, I would just say take the head. If it's a takedown or a carry out, just take the head and move with it. I know it sounds childish, I know it sounds basic, but the old school, schoolyard headlock can sometimes be where it's at. As a trained martial artist, if I put him in headlock, he's going to dump me on my head. The average idiot out there, if you don't give him a chance, grab the head and move, you'll get a response. So, let's go again, try and move me out. Okay, you must move me to point B, Red. Right? Get off, get off me, get off. Get off, get off, get off me, get off me, get off me. Stop it, help, help, he's assaulting me, assault, assault. This is what you'll get people doing. The longer this goes on, the worse Red looks. Because the public won't say to the manager, oh, uh, he, was, he was doing his best to restrain him, and the guy was struggling. They'll just say, the doorman was fighting with that guy and there was no need for it. At any point, if Red chooses to while I'm doing this, get off me, get off me, you can, knock, you can knock me out. But by virtue of the fact that you as a doorman are trying to protect that member of the public, it's making your life hard. It's the same with the police. I've seen the policemen doing this thing. There was actually two, two busies who were trying to get cuffs on someone who just grabbed my hand. And they were trying to get cuffs on this guy and all he did was this, like a sustainer drill. And they couldn't get it on. Now if they decided that them putting the cuffs on was more important than protecting his safety and protecting his wrists, I'm sure they could have signed on in no time. But because they were doing it gingerly, new policemen, they always put the new policemen on the street, I don't know why. Come on sir, stop it sir, stop it, stop it. Didn't work. The reason why I don't show carry-alongs or come-alongs, come-alongs will only work against kids and idiots or people who are really pissed, in which case you don't have to use them anyway. If somebody's a lot weaker than you, you don't need a come-along or a wrist lock. And the other thing with wrist locks is put me in any lock you like. Okay? Reg is, Reg is a strong lad. I'm, I'm you know, reasonably strong. Most people, if, they're, if they've got any kind of arm strength, there's two things that they can do, two things that you can get that will ruin a uh, come-along. So if you put me in any arm lock you like, anyone you like, okay, so we're going to go there. If they're strong, you will always get this. Get off me. Or if you go to put a wrist lock on me, just do that, and you're not going to get it on. You're not going to get it on, but they won't do this like they're trying to have a shit. <laughs> you just won't get, it. You won't get it on in the first place. If you get a wrist lock on somebody, they're a divvy. Oh, oh I've got a wrist lock on, and now you can walk me out. It ties up both your hands as well. That's why I, the other reason I don't like come alongs. What if his mate runs across the bar and smashes you in the head and you're like this? You've got a come along one. Oh, the shit. They're a waste of time. The, you know. So, oh, sorry, mate. God, bless you, Reg. Sorry. So if you've got this kind of thing, if Reggie chooses to get out of that, get out of that, Reg. Whatever you want. You can, you can just do whatever he likes. If they've got any kind of form whatsoever, you can do whatever they like. Put, put any wrist lock on. The second thing you'll get apart from the strength, put it, put it on um, properly, go on, more, 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 that's it, okay, is there's either strength or some people are flexible, like people who've done martial arts, tends to, I, I did Aikido when I was growing up, we used to put arm locks on each other for massage, to stretch, and we deliberately see how far attendance could go, just, just for the fun of it, and people could just stretch out. I'm, I'm a fucker like, if I go to a submissions class, I'm a fucker because you can put me in arm locks and I'll go, when most people are tapped, I'll be like breathing through it and going, if you, you can actually learn, I know this sounds crazy, the thing with arm locks, right, is just, your shoulders are right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Say like, for example, you've got a shoulder lock here. If I actually squeeze this down and Reg chooses not to experience that as pain, but as a nice stretch, like I'm helping him, it suddenly becomes not that much of an issue. You know, I would get people to do that to me because you can get like a really good stretch. You put wrist locks on, arm locks on, you stretch your tendons and you can learn to enjoy it. So it's not an effective thing to do. And it comes down to psychologically what's happening. We were discussing yesterday when we had Trevor Roberts well, yeah. getting bit. Yeah. And what was he getting bit for? Like he was trying to show something, wasn't he? Yeah. He, he, was, trying, he was trying to show if, if people, if you change your mindset and you don't think he's biting you instead, you just think, oh, you are not you are not the person being bit. Sometimes that feeling just go away. And you gave the example of eating his tea. Yeah, well, well, the example is when you are eating dinner and and when you're watching TV, sometimes you don't feel the taste and you just keep doing it because you're focused on something else. 
a lot, a lot of pain, especially when you're fighting, comes down to shock. The first time you go to a Thai boxing class, you sort of go bang in your thigh, bang in your thigh, you're like, fuck. And you feel sick, and you think, that, oh, that's broken. That's what you'd be in the corner, that's fucking broken. It's not. By the, you know, after six months, nine months, you'll be standing there going, go on, kick me in the leg, <laughs> and you feel nothing. Same leg. You can't condition where you can. You can make the muscles a little bit harder. But a lot of it is, your nerves actually start to send less of a signal. Um, just like people who, who struggle from like cancer or they've got tumours, at first it'll hurt, but then the nerves get used to it and they'll stop sending that signal. So wrist locks, carry-alongs, that kind of thing, they're just shit. Either they'll strength the way out of it, or, they, or you can just um, stretch your way out of these things. So don't bother with them. You've got to move the whole body. If you can get a wrist lock on, the person's a divvy, or they're drunk, or they're a lot weaker than you, so you never needed it in the first place. Keep it simple. Keep it really, really simple. If I was going to move Reg from this side, give me whatever level of resistance you like. And I'm saying, come on Reg, how can you go mate? That's a good lad. What, what I'm doing here is, don't worry so much about the physical techniques, but I'm pushing his head and pulling the arm at the same time, just to keep him off balance. You want to do the same thing Reg? You're just moving me from here to there. See Reg isn't used to this. It's a really, really weird thing. You do have to drill it. And just try and move me forward. Just try and move me. Yeah. Then whatever way you can make, you've got to get me out. Because the, this is the thing, right? You're at a time limit. The longer you take to move somebody out, that's good. Well done. Nice one. The longer you take to move somebody out, the more you lose control of the situation. So if we've escalated from, come on, mate, you're going to have to go, to level number three, whatever you want to call it, where he's actually shrug it off, just say, right here, I now need to take control of the situation, and this is where you do need to learn things like headlocks and, and chokes and that kind of thing. Because if he pulls me off here and we get into this match and we go no, and he goes no, and I go no, and he goes, we're gonna, I'm gonna look like an idiot. This is where learning a few chokes, carry on, just come on, mate, stop struggling, stop struggling, just move, can help. Um, I've got DVDs that deal with headlocks, chokes, that kind of thing. Um, I don't generally. Uh, in fact, I never teach wrist locks and arm locks. That's not to say I've not used them. I have used wrist locks and arm locks, but I wouldn't train somebody to use something that I personally wouldn't use. Chokes and headlocks work because you're taking control of the head. If I'm moving Reg, or I'm trying to move him, come back to point A again, I'm trying to move him, and he's just not having it. I just, just stand your feet, like stand your feet. So people have done this to me before. Right? If I keep. The, he could end up going down here. I could get a takedown here. Oh, oh fantastic. Four. Or a, what, a rolling knee bar, yeah. Reg is going to go with a rolling knee bar. If, it, if you get a takedown, it's the last thing you want. I want him upright, I want him up on his feet. And if, uh, you know, you might get somebody who knows a bit of grappling or whatever, you've got to stay in control of him. So, say if we go back to where we were there, really, he could be a grappler. So I've got to do, I'm basically going to keep to my main strategy, stressing them in the way, attacking the main body mass via the shoulder here, and just keep pushing him. But I can't be lazy. I can't do that like this. I've got to get down and move him along the same line of, of strength that he's using as well. Nine times out of ten, if somebody is, if you just shake, shake my hand off every time I try and grab it, this is a very common thing. You're going to have to get inside. You're going to have to take the head in some way. You're going to have to learn how to do tie clinching. You're going to have to learn how to get to, this is a great position to get to. Your back chokes, your sleepers. All of that, I'm not going to show you that on this DVD. I just want you to get this drill. Just move me again, Reg. Move me across the floor. Really simple drill. I'm being good. No, I'm going to be naughty. Get off. Get off me. Not going. Not get off. Get off me. Ah! <laughs> this is normal. 90% of your problems on the door, of your scuffles, will look like that. They won't be mad, you know, big fights where people are brawling that. That'll happen every once in a while, and you need to train for that as well. I, I, was, I said 90%. Most of the time when you take people out, in my experience, and I've trained, I've, I've worked all over the pool and uh, a load of bars in Tenerife as well. Most people don't want to fight dormant. Most people, when the dorm say, can you go please mate, because you've done this, I'll go, oh, even though they're pissed, oh yes, I've been a bell end, I need to go now. And say, 80% of the time, or 70% of the time, they'll go with no problem. The other 30% will go with some problem because they're trying to save face. They don't want to be seen to be taken out like this. They don't just want to go and go, oh, I'm getting thrown out. 
So they'll make a show of resisting you, but they don't want to push you to the point where you'll actually bang them because they realize you're bigger than them and they're going to get knocked out. So this is common. Try and move me. Stop it, get off me. I'm not going. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. Don't make me fucking hit you. Don't make me hit you. <laughs> and this kind of thing. Woo! This kind of thing. What Reg is a master. Tai Chi master Reg. If you swing people, you can't always do that when it's when it's like really crowded and packed. Sometimes you know what? Sometimes it's going to be a clusterfuck. If you can learn to do the kind of thing Reg is doing, where you're actually swimming them around, there's no point in me showing you a load of techniques and you sitting there on your arse and going, "Oh yeah, I remember to do that," because you won't. You've actually got to get in the gym with your mates and just just fucking have a have a laugh with it, just mess around with it. As long as before you get on the door, you have had like half an hour, 40 minutes experience of going, come on mate, out you go, pushing him, resist a little bit more, have somebody doing that. It's tricky, this is now, this is tricky. If he, if he goes to the floor, I've got a problem. If he goes to the floor and goes, what are you gonna do now? I can't move him, we're gonna have to get like four of us to pick him up a little each and take him out. So you wanna keep him upright, start by being super, super polite, Really, really simple commands. Come on, Shay, you're going to have to go the doors that way. Assert yourself, we're moving in that direction so his drunk, confused, battered, drug addled mind is not confused about where he's going. You go out the door and then you just walk him. And if he starts to fuck around, you know, do your thing, whatever that happens to be. If you're into, if you've only ever boxed or done tie boxing or kickboxing, there's a gap in your training which you've got to fill. If you want to be a doorman, you can't bang people on the door. Well, you can, but not all the time. Not every problem is a nail, and not every solution is a hammer. So just do this job and just work it out for yourself. But I would say I, I wouldn't recommend anybody get on the door without having done these kinds of drills at least a little bit. I think that's all I've got to say on that one. Thank you. I didn't say anything. So what were you doing? Because there are a lot of people I just walked in. Mm. And then this guy was like throwing people hands away from him. What, so people were getting calm and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, was, he was doing this, so I, I put this here, and he, when I touched this, he, he did that. Yeah. And like, when he did that, I slipped from here. Then I take this, and I did this, and I walked in there like that. Good. Yeah. Then I slowly lay him down, I hold his head, and I lay him down. Did he start fighting, or did he, was he going? <laughs> when I put him up, he stopped. It's it. One of the things we can't do, that I would quite like to do, is get a door frame. Because, um, was he grabbing on stuff as you threw him? Oh, for God. No, so this is the thing, isn't it? It's just um, one small final point don't expect it to look clean. Most fights are a clusterfuck. If somebody's really going to be messing with you whilst, um, whilst you're trying to get them out, it's going to be a mess and you'll end up with a ripped shirt and spill drinks and all the rest of it. But that's, that's quite nice. Like, what is, you, you spam it, go on, do it again. This one here. It's like the backstabbing jitsu, I told you. Yeah. Like this. Then I hold the head from here, then I pull the chin. I twist to the yeah. If you get if you get somebody back, they've got to go. It's really really hard to resist. If um, if you actually get to the back, you've now you've escalated it to the point where you know it, it does look quite bad. But at least if if I take if I take Reggie back and I'm walking him out backwards this way, it's a really nice simple technique. Just push the lower back. Don't even worry about getting the choke on here. If you're struggling, you can grab your own shirt if you want to give him a little squeeze on his neck. And you're walking out this way, it's, it's very, very hard for them to resist. So sometimes getting somebody back can be a good thing to do. I see it now. Finished. I'm not even a dorm anymore. I'm just a blade. Oh, that's the end of me now. I've got knocked out from the camera. You can take that! teach arm locks. A lot of what I was doing to the uninitiated might look like an arm lock. Um, when I'm grabbing around here and pushing into the armpit or pushing into the neck, it seems as though maybe if you don't really know what you're looking at, like that could be an arm lock. An arm lock implies to me that the um, joint 
or is at the point of hyperextension and you've taken it to the point of hyper, the same with the wrist lock, you've basically hyperextended the joint and you've taken it to that point and then you've locked it, which is the fantasy that, you know, I, I've got this in place and now that's locked. You know, that, that now needs to be unlocked in order for them to move, which is, is just not true. What I'm doing is probably better, you could probably describe that as like an arm manipulation or you've got like arm drags in wrestling, maybe if you think of it as the opposite of an arm drag, an arm push. What I'm looking to do is to control the body. The reason why I do it like that, and I don't go for the committed movements that some lads go for, Red's quite is, is comfortable in that grappling range, and um, if you watch the day four, you know, Wrestling for Doorwork DVD, he gets into a very, very close range. I'm not comfortable there because it feels like a commitment to me. I don't want to commit that much of my body to my opponent where I'm in here. If I, if I have to, then I'll go there. If I don't, but I don't necessarily want to have to go there. I'd rather keep my options open and be able to keep my head up. So that's the first point. The second point that I wanted to make was we mentioned Trevor Roberts yesterday and I never really finished off what I was talking about. We were talking about attachments and uh, you know if somebody happened in Trevor's case where he was demonstrating if somebody was biting him, if he wasn't attached to not being bitten, then it didn't affect him at a psychological level. Pain is a very subjective experience and it goes through a lot of interpretive processes inside the brain before your body will send you a signal to say how much pain you're in. And it's, it's true of the, the arm lock example that we gave. If the person you are attempting to arm lock or wrist lock is not attached to not being arm locked or wrist locked, somebody like me, I'm not attached to the idea of not being put in a wrist lock. To me, I associate that to a potentially, you know, an okay place to be. Same in anything. If you'll find somebody who's a boxer, that boxer will not be attached to the notion of not being hit in the face. If I get somebody who's never sparred before and I just bang them in the jaw, the, 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 the world could end. That's why sometimes you see fights, street fights, and I tap him here, and he goes down and he's howling, and another lad could even be smaller than him, I bang him with five good shots in the face, and he still stays standing. Obviously drugs and alcohol and other things can be a factor as well. But like that is, is psychological, it's, it's attachment. Some people aren't attached to the notion of not getting hurt. As you, if you're a doorman, you need to sort of, you do need to develop some kinds of martial arts training and the degree of martial arts skill. The advantage that martial artists who engage in hard contact training have is they're not um, attached to the idea of not getting hit. They'll accept hits, they'll accept digs, and psychologically they'll be able to keep going. The final thing that I wanted to add is I, I mentioned yesterday about this thing of headlocking like this as though um, it's an acceptable thing to do. It's your last port of call. It's, we, you know, I don't use the word headlocks. Um, I, tend to talk about head controls. That one to the side, there's the schoolyard headlock. I say it's the last port of call because if the guy's got any form at all, you give a lot of weight. If I headlock reds, there's a lot of things that you can do from here, and some of them can leave me really fucked up. You know, that you could, you could flip me, you could pick me up, dump me on my head. If that's all you've got, then that's all you've got to work with. You know, a fight is a clusterfuck and it's, it's going to be a mess. You know, you're, it's going to be an undignified scrabble. Otherwise, it's not a fight, you're just walking somebody out of the club. That side headlock is not ideal. A better one than, than that one in order of priority, if you like, the, the, the worst one is the schoolyard headlock, where his body is behind me. To make that slightly better, if I've got his body in front of me in a guillotine, and I'm not going to show you the exact technical points of this, but if you get somebody in a guillotine or a grobbit or a front face lock, this is a little bit better. I can push him and I can pull him from here. And there's still things he can do. If he's a really good grappler, there's still things he can do. But fundamentally, the difference between a side headlock is there's a throw from a side headlock. With a front headlock or a guillotine, you've got to break the guillotine really before you do that much to the person, unless you're very, very strong, in which case, you know, you could potentially just lift them off their feet. Better than those two, a slightly better thing to be able to do is, um, I would say, in order of priority, is to, is to get the back and walk backwards with them, pushing into, sorry, let's spin you around here, pushing into the lower back here, the simple thing I showed you yesterday. Reggie showed you this is a variation, clamping up with both hands, cupping the chin. Um, and the best one for me, because you can do it one handed and you can still look around, you're in control and the other guy is not, is I would personally prefer the side choke or side head control position where I can still look around the room. Both of my hands are committed here. If I need to, I can grab hold of the back of his shirt and just power it with my arm. As I walk, if he starts to struggle more, then I can assist it and power that in with both hands, sink my weight. But I can walk him. I can move and I can still look around. I can still see. 
and as we push people out of the way, as we're moving them, get back, get back, move out of the way, as we walk towards the end deck, we were talking about yesterday, like this metaphorical exit scenario that we've created. The most important thing with this is for you as an individual, not to learn techniques, but to get used to physical movement. I hammered this point yesterday and I'll bother to hammer it again today. If you just start pushing me right, this is a very unique experience, very seldom in life when you find yourself doing this. So what Reg is doing is a unique skill set and you don't see it in many martial arts. We're not dropping him, we're not taking him to the floor, we're not beating him up, we're just moving him. Now, it's going to get to a point, actually if you move me again Reg, and you should be training for this, we'll do this, we'll go into this on the next control and explain DVD. If he starts moving me and I'm struggling, that's one thing. But at some point, Reg is going to have to decide if I'm struggling too much and he now has to fight me. It's, it's not a restraint, it's now a fight. And that's when you start to escalate from here, where people get really pissed off and they turn around and move for this. Now, it's different. Now, Reg's decision is going to be, he's going to actually fight me as though we're in a, a match fight. You know, one against one. And he's going to seek to, he's going to have to seek to bash me up a little bit before he can continue to move me. But we'll look at that on the next DVD. The point of this is not to say, you know, gather more techniques. It's a really simple drill. The A to B drill. Practice it with your mates and just up the level of, of, of non-compliance. And you don't have to take it seriously. It can be a laugh. It's a good little workout. If you go and meet up with your mates, do the pads, go and do the weights, and then at the very end, just do this for a bit and just experiment with different techniques, show each other different ways of doing stuff. But my advice is don't get stuck in the fantasy, this is your good wrist, isn't it? Of the, of the, of the come along you know, that they often do on police training courses, come with me to, you know, I've, I've never seen that work in. I've had ample opportunity to experiment with this kind of thing. The only time I've ever got a wrist lock, the one wrist lock I've got on people a few times is this one, and they were much, much, much weaker than me, and I came in from the side, and I didn't talk to them, there was no, there was no voters, I just grabbed them and pushed it on and forced them with it, and they're weaker than me, so there's a thousand and one different techniques that would have worked. The point of this, it's not about acquiring techniques, it's about you as an individual, if you're looking to do door work, acquiring that skill set, getting used to that range of motion and that subjective experience. Uh, anything else to add on that, Reg? No, oh, nah. Finished. Okay. Cheap. Mm. <coughs> oh, this drill, I think this drill will be the best drill for doing the A to B thing, because when, when we actually struggle, this is not really like grappling, like sort of like grappling, but in Tai Chi there's no, known as push hand and your goal is not to force anything but to make one person's feet step front or step back. So don't rely on strength, rely on sensitivity on where does this guy move, such as if he, if he pushes me, I pull this down, he'll naturally fall. This will greatly enhance your attributes and to control the restraint and move to the ones. Okay. So the objective of this is just to get your opponent's feet to move. Well, the objective of it is actually to develop some kind of kinesthetic sensitivity, get used to moving. Oh, you got me. That one moved. Without too much strength, and just getting used to the experience of feeling where the other person's body is. I'm pretty sure this drill is, is unique to Tai Chi. It's a good workout, and it just gets you used to this thing of feeling what's he going to do, where's he going to move. Because when I like, if you grapple out some drunk from a club on a Saturday night, you're not going to move with the sensitivity and skill of your partner in the gym. It's got me. So this kind of thing is more. It looks weird, but this is more applicable to moving somebody in that A to B drill and standing there and bang on the pads. That will have applicability when it goes really badly wrong and you're just fighting. These are the things you're gonna need. But for most of the door work, I mean, even in shitholes, you shouldn't need that more than, you know, 5% of the time you're working. Um, depending on how many nights you're on, most of the time it'll be moving people along and doing this drill a bit more. I wanna see if I can balance you at least once. <laughs> that was brings eternal. Oh. 